spill the tea as some of you would have noticed I didn't post an episode last week and that's not because I completely forgot it's because I'm back at work so I obviously have much less time on my hands and it was kind of becoming a bit of a chore because editing took so long and my Wi-Fi was driving me mad so going forward I'm gonna post one every two weeks and then hopefully it will keep it fresh for you guys as well and you don't get sick of hearing from me so this week I have a lockdown special for you. So the reason it's a lockdown special is because I'm speaking to two amazing ladies called Mel and Maz. Mel and Maz. The Mel and Maz show. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So I'm speaking to Mel and Maz about two separate incredible lockdown projects that they've done. And they're so creative and also they are for great causes. So hopefully it's something that you guys can get on board with as well. I'm not gonna do the explaining, I'm gonna leave that to them. So I hope you enjoy it. It's not a particularly long video, so hopefully you can watch the whole thing. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, do what you gotta do. Speak to you soon, bye bye. So you've been very busy recently. Yeah, I have been very busy. Just had your photo in a tiny publication called Vogue. I know, I was literally so happy. It was like a massive, massive moment. And it was kind of unexpected, I guess, because I would have wanted it. To, I always thought it would be like the Guardian or one of those places. And then when it was Vogue, I was like, oh my God, it's Vogue. So yeah, I was super happy. And for people watching, obviously, I know and you know what it's about. but what was the photo and what event were you at? So I was at the Black Lives Matter protest in Bristol on Sunday. And the photo is the moment Edward Colston, the slave trader, was coming down, was pulled down by protesters. And it's kind of, the, it was such an electric moment. Like the crowd, the moment it started coming down, the crowd was immediately starting to, you know, move and become one. Um, it was, probably one of the best moments I've had as a photojournalist so far I would say. That's Definitely. just given me goosebumps even you talking yeah. about it. I, I know. Can, it's just unreal I can imagine and obviously before that you had your um well still ongoing but your kind of lockdown project so yeah. tell us a bit about that. So um, I started Standing Still which is a project that kind of highlights how time has stood still for so many people um, over lockdown and just had to find entertainment or escapism or just happiness and loads of little different things. So for mine, it's been my camera, it's literally been my saviour. And it just kind of made me wonder what other people's was. So I put some notes through people, my neighbours' doors explaining like what the project was and then managed to get some people involved. And the moment one person said something, then it was able to, you know, started getting more and more people responding, which was really good. Um, and that's been lovely. I've just been cycling around Bristol, taking photos of people, talking to them. Um, and it's just been so nice to talk to strangers because like, you can't, you haven't been able to do that during lockdown. You know, you're speaking to your friends or your family, um, but it was, it's just been really nice to, and you're hoping to do, donate money to charity. Is that right? Have I got that right? Yeah. So once, um, not exact, once I feel like I've got the images that I want to, the images that I want, I'm planning on making it into a book um, and incorporate some photos that I've taken during lockdown to kind of contextualise the whole project. Um, and then after that, I'm going to sell the book and hopefully people will want it and then get some proceeds for the Above and Beyond charity, which is a Bristol-based NHS research charity. Oh, wow, cool. that's so yeah. cool. And yeah. how have you found it in lockdown? Because, I mean, I was on furlough before, so this is why I started Spill the Tea. And I don't think I ever would have done if I wasn't on furlough and had that time to just pause and think, what do I actually want to do that's just a bit creative? And I've seen so many people do these kind of projects and Instagrams. Mm -hmm. How have you found it this time to just pause and do what you want just for the love of it? It's been, it's been really like, it's just been quite freeing and it's just 
reminded me why I do what I do. Like I did love my job and I mean, I was still getting lots of kind of gratification from it, but I just felt like this has been such a great chance for me to actually take my camera and like take photos and focus on my own creativity and spread spread me out basically you know like promote myself which is something I feel like when you're working all the time you don't do and as a filmmaker and aspiring filmmaker and as photojournalist you need people to know who you are and you need to bring them to you it's a lot harder for at my level for them to come find you so it's been a great opportunity to do that I'd say um and I don't think I, like, I wouldn't have started, you know, started standing still. And I don't even know, I, I mean, I would have definitely gone to the protest on Sunday, but I don't know if I would have given it so much attention to try and get my photos to all the different publications and to kind of build off that now as well. And so I just think it's been, it has been great in that sense. Really, really good. Definitely. Yeah, it's definitely help people to get more creative. It's just giving people time, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, you touched upon it just now but where were you working before are you just having a break or where were you so working? I was working at Keo Films which is an independent production company in Bristol and um, I was a junior production coordinator for a National Geographic series I just got promoted um, before lockdown which is so nice because I got a job as a researcher for BBC um, documentary War on Waste with Hugh Fenn. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and that would just be so, because I just really wanted to be more on the editorial side than the logistical side. But yeah, it's fine. At least I got the promotion. So it shows that I'm moving forward, which is good. Yeah, I'm moving in the right direction. And where, yeah. where is that end goal? Where are you trying to work towards? What would be um, the dream job for you? The dream? Hmm. I think sounds so cliche but um it would be to basically be create documentaries and um photo series that basic that encourage change so i i feel like the day i will know that i've kind of made it is when one of my documentaries that i've produced um actually changes policy or actually changes something within the social infrastructure to benefit um citizens and those kind of who are suffering injustices etc so documentary producer is partly changing the world <laughs> and what would you say to people i mean because you've worked on some really cool productions like you say and you've you've had the kind of confidence i guess to just go out there and do things like standing still and go to huge protests and take these incredible photos what would you say to people that kind of think oh, might have an interest or I've got this idea that I want to kind of get going, but I don't have the confidence to do it. Don't think you need to make everything perfect. Just jot the idea down. Just take your camera and just go to a smaller process if you want to. Or try and you don't need to, it doesn't need to be that big idea that you have or that kind of big moment or big event that you feel like you need to capture. It can just be, a family event or it can just be something to get you comfortable with what you're doing and it, I think that's the biggest thing to start small because when you start small you notice little things and then when you do get to that big moment when you are in that moment of like adrenaline or whatever's happening you'll you'll feel more confident in yourself to be like I know I can do this I know I can get the image I want out of this so yeah start small and then you'll be big Obviously, the main reason that I asked you to come on was this amazing project that you're doing. So tell us all about it. Lockdown ladies. Um, where do I start? So back when I, did my, I went to my parents for lockdown, um, I was meant to have actually moved to Japan. Oh, wow. That, that didn't happen. Um, so I was back home doing my master's and obviously bored like everyone else. Yeah, I know the feeling started drawing my own nudes <laughs> if I'm completely honest and then started drawing my friends and posting them on Instagram and people started to really like them and want to buy them and I had been reading a lot about the crazy increase in domestic violence mm -hmm. um, 
think it was something like Refuge reported a 700% increase in calls um, to their hotline. That's and so nice. there was something like, um, I think it was a, the, the amount of deaths from women from d- in domestic violence relationships had dub- doubled in three weeks. Oh, which was just my bad. Lord. And I think the nature of the um, pictures that I've been drawing um, were quite empowering. And so I decided to set up like a just, just giving and it just blew up. And what's like, it on now? I looked uh, yesterday. But... Yeah, so we're on, I think it's like £6,300. Um, that's insane. And your target was like... 100 quid. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy, isn't it? I know. So, um, but also we've raised, in the last week, I've kind of I've changed the... Um, I've changed it from refuge in light of Black Lives Matter um, to a, to give it to a project called London Black Women's Project. It's like central to London. Um, I just thought it'd be a nice thing to do and um, we've almost raised a thousand pounds in a week, six days. That is and, incredible. That's so insane. What's your kind of response been from the charities? I'm assuming you've spoken um, to them. Really lovely, yeah. I mean, it, it's always a tricky one when with the nature of the drawings, you know, they're very raw. Um, and I think when it comes to the to refuge charity, um, they have to be careful with an affiliation with something like what I'm doing, um, with lots of topics around, you know, revenge porn and things like that, you know, it can be a funny yeah. um, blurring line, but yeah, they're really supportive. I mean, any money is great money at the moment for a, such a big cause and something that we all really need to support. Um, but yeah, I'm really proud of it. It's amazing. Yeah. And just the comments that I get from people, especially when people send me their nude pictures, that it's just incredible, the things that I've heard. Um, and people saying that they've never sent one before. Um, really? Now to have the confidence to do so and like have it pride of place in their living room. <laughs> I think, I mean, that's, I think that's the whole thing about it because what you touched on there before, like revenge porn, there's Mm. this idea of sending nudes. Um, And I think this is just completely flipped on its head. Yeah, it's really interesting because they have such a weird and strange connotation in in terms of the way that they are perceived um, and the way that often that their scent can be set a, a blurred place to be. Um, and I think by flipping that on, on its head and it being a, a safe space and community just for women where, you know, I will never do anything with them. My phone is like dynamite. Uh, where did the idea come from? Just, I mean, like you say, just being at home, you just thought. Just, yeah. I don't know. I remember we were on like our group chat, the girls group chat. Um, I remember sending, sending a message and being like, everyone send me your nudes I'm, I want to draw them like I, I, I want some inspiration because I remember I was drawing like I was drawing random stuff at home and nothing was that interesting and then I started posting them on, them on Instagram and I honestly I had people I haven't spoken to in years be like can I send you a picture <laughs> can I send you a picture and I was like yeah of course you can oh my god this is amazing and I've had Obviously, my lips are sealed, but I've had people's mums, I've had people's grandmas, I've had like all ages. It's crazy, really cool. Do you think you would have done this without kind of being in this position? Obviously, no. it wouldn't be lockdown ladies, but no, I definitely wouldn't have done. I mean, I'm a design student, so I can't, I kind of guess I've neglected that side of things quite a lot. And found a sketchbook at home in my old childhood bedrooms like I'll just do, start doing a few things but um after this project it's kind of enlightened my actual design work and where I want that to go and I think I'm going to have to try and make this like a bigger platform now because I think it has such a, a lovely following and community feel that it has the scope to become something um that could grow with lots of people, not just me drawing, but have lots of people drawing. Um, and yeah, could grow into something really lovely, hopefully. hopefully. Yeah, I'm sure it will. So what's the next target money-wise? Are we hoping for 10 grand? I'm hoping for 10 grand. I'd love to get to a um, thousand pounds on Sunday. 
for London Black Women's Project. Um, I'm not sure. I think the next step is collaboration. Yeah. Because it's like I've ne- it's insane that 3,000 people follow me. Like I've never had anything like that. That's weird. Influencer. So it it's just, yeah. I know. I'm not like on my phone, like, how does, like, what do I do? And just getting obsessed with like insights and all that. Very yeah. bizarre. Um, but I think I really want to do some kind of thing each week, like an artist feature or something, and do like a um, limited edition print from people that want to get involved and stuff like that. Um, what has happened to Maz's menu? Oh, God. <laughs> Someone asked me the day. I just, I'm such a narcissist. I've got like five Instagrams going at the moment. I can't have another can't. one. I haven't got the time. You have to get a PA at some point. <laughs> no, yeah. I literally don't have the time. No. Not enough hours in the day. I miss it though, but I'm not making as much sourdough anymore as other people doing that. So, <laughs> yeah. Everyone's jumped on the bandwagon. Exactly, You've started a movement. Exactly. Well, <laughs> amazing well I won't steal any more of your evening but thank you so much for doing it it's such a nice chat yeah and yeah. I will put a link below as well so everyone that watches it go and buy some nudes Woo. <laughs> and donate even yeah. if you don't want to, even if you don't want a nude donate anyway <laughs>